Okay, welcome back to the podcast, you guys. I'm so excited for this episode because we have the one and only Nikki. I'm like... I'm obsessed with you. I love when I feel like we're genuine friends and I feel like me and you feel like we're genuine friends. Like when we get in real life with each other, I feel like we're going to be besties. Um, but I'm so excited to have you on the podcast because your story and your journey has been so inspiring. Um, it's super motivational and anyone who is coming from corporate is just going to be absolutely obsessed with you. So um, hello and welcome. Why don't you give a little rundown on who Nikki really is? Yeah. So uh, I'm Nikki. I actually have kind of a really crazy background as far as just like work history goes. Um, and so a little bit about my background is I essentially graduated college in 2016. I just quite literally started working my ass off. I have a very strong work ethic. And so I always thought the harder you work, the more successful you become just naturally. Um, and so I grew really quickly in my career. I worked harder than anybody else. I started working for startups, agencies, um, all this crazy stuff. And then, you know, what really happened is I was making a stupid amount of money at a startup, like mm -hmm. money I never thought I would ever be making. And I was like, oh, this is it. Like I've made it right. And then I realized that I still wasn't happy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this is like the true career crisis that everyone talks about. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's one of those things where it's like, I can't afford to quit because I'm mm -hmm. making so much money. Um, but then I got laid off. So I feel like that was the oh. universe's way to be like, no, nope, go. we're just going to draw you back to reality for a second. And so I got laid off last February. And so it's almost been a year. And I took a lot of time to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, I was like, maybe I should try corporate, larger company. I'd only done startups. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I wanted like more of a work life balance. And I'd heard corporate is like close your laptop and you're done type vibe. So I ended up in April getting a job in corporate America. And it they promised me rainbows and butterflies. And I got like they always like, do. I got like dead puppies and mud puddles. Like it was literally just like, not anything that I thought. And so I was working that for a while. And I think I found you in like July of that last year. Okay. Um, I ended up buying your course like end of July, beginning of August. And I just started working both jobs. I started treating my web design as a second job. Like truly I was like three hours a day or whatever it is. Um, and I have been, I've been freelancing on the side for marketing since 2018. So I've been freelancing. I know the creative side and I was just feeling really dead in my corporate America job of just the rigidness behind it. Mm. And I found your course and I started with wealthy web designer, I believe. Yeah. And CEO of show it. And I had been on a couple of really big website projects for like my, like my nine to five work. Like mm. I have done I've project managed $25,000 websites. Like I know the process. And so I was like, I can do this. Mm. Like the websites I was seeing be designed in like agencies and enterprises. I was like, I can literally build this and better than they are. Mm. <laughs> um, and so I started doing that. And then I just decided like, this is my one shot to just start acting like I'm legit essentially and stop trying to do it as a side hustle, like show up as the business owner hmm. and take it seriously. And it's just, I launched in October um, and it's been literally crazy ever since. So fun yeah. fact, you're like one of the first people to find out, but I am quitting my job tomorrow. <gasps> my what? Yeah. Oh my God. Are you putting your two weeks or you're just like, I'm yeah, done? I'm putting in my two weeks because I'm a nice person. <laughs> and, but yeah, two weeks tomorrow. Isn't that exciting? Holy shit. I literally have like goosebumps on my arms. I know, is... I saw you on the pod. I was like, this would be so fun. <laughs> so exciting. Thanks. Oh my God. Uh, How does that feel? Like, did you set goals for yourself when you first started? You, your biggest goal was to quit your job. It sounds yeah, like my biggest goal was to quit. And I basically told myself, I'm going to give myself six months from when I launched mm. six months of literally working my ass off, embracing that it's going to suck. You're working 12 to 14 hour days. You have to make both work, mm. but in order to show up in both and be successful at both, 
you literally have to work hard. There is no secret sauce. There's no like time hacking per se. I mean, there's a certain level to that. But like at the end of the day, it's like discipline and just mm-hmm. getting shit done. And so my goal was six months and that essentially puts me at four months of being done. So accelerated oh. timeline, but isn't that crazy? That is so exciting. I'm so proud of you. You'll never I look know. back. I swear when you make the decision of going all in on yourself, once you yeah. get that taste, you're, you'll never have a shitty boss again. I promise you that. No, literally, I literally immediately started manifesting. I was like, my mornings, like, if I don't feel like doing meetings, I don't have to do a meeting. Like, I can literally go work out. I can go to lunch with a friend. Like, I can literally do <laughs> whatever I want. Oh my and God. no one's here but myself. And I'm obsessed with it. But yeah, it is it's, great. It's terrifying. Yeah. But I think that there's like... I don't know when else in your life do you truly like trust yourself enough to like Mm. do something insane like that. And I'm one of those people where I'm like, I can always get another nine to five job. You you can, but like rarely do you have the momentum to do something for yourself. I feel like. Yeah, totally. Well, and the way that you just described like your dream mornings, it, it sounds so crazy because it's so far from most people's lives, but why like life is so short. I know that it's so cliche, but it's so short. Like, why would you not be able to, if you wake up and want to go work out, why that should be able to be a choice. Like if you want to eat lunch at fucking home or you want to go out and get wine at two PM on a Tuesday, why can't you like, that is how I feel life should be lived. And I can't comprehend how to live life. Not yeah, like that. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. There's definitely that like career crisis of, I think it happened, like I'm 30 and it's really common in like 30, early thirties, late twenties, especially in women who are like high achieving, like usually a lot of corporate people. Mm-hmm. And then when you actually realize how much longer you have to work for someone else, like that causes me more anxiety than like taking a chance on myself and seeing if I can, you know what I mean? Like that is my nightmare. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's just working until you hit retirement age. You know what I mean? So were you able to replace your income for your nine to five or have you made more in your web design business per month than what you were making nine to five? Way more my web design. Yep. Yeah. Way more. Okay. So I want to break that down. So making way more, what does that look like? And how much time are you like working way more for it? Or is the trade-off like you actually have more time freedom, but you're making more money? Um, you definitely have more time freedom. I mean, right now I'm making double my corporate salary in a month. Um, and so that's amazing and incredible. And the way I have my business set up, is really focusing on time freedom. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of my day rates and kind of accelerated like websites in a week and things where it's like, I can make this amount of money, but still have my flexibility Mm -hmm. and also have time to do other things. Because like I said, I come from a marketing background so I can serve my clients in other ways and providing more value of just education or more passive income as well that I can eventually grow. But that was really important to me is the biggest thing is not always being tied to a desk. Like that was my business model mentality. Really? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I feel like I relate to that because that's my biggest value. Like when I first started, I was like, I want to get rich and barely work. Like why, you know, and obviously that's such a facade because I totally work. Like I probably work way more than even anyone who thinks I work observing me on Instagram. I work my ass off, but it's chosen work. And it's also like work that creates fulfillment for me. And so it doesn't feel even like the same work when you really enjoy what you're doing, even if you're working your ass off, you know, the trade off is so much better. I told my husband that constantly where I'm like, even now when I'm working like 12, 14 hour days, it doesn't, this work doesn't feel like work. It's chosen. I get to work with incredible clients and really cool businesses. I get to build something that's like transformational to like their success. Mm -hmm. And it's so much fun and I like it. So again, it doesn't even like websites in a day, which are like really long days and it is exhausting, but it doesn't feel the same as if you're in a corporate meeting back to back for eight hours talking mm-hmm. about 
You know what I mean? Like, it's just like a different energy shift. Totally. Well, not to mention that if you were to be at a nine to five job and you have like a stack day of meetings, you're exhausted. Then you have to show up at work again at eight o'clock in the morning the next day and be fucking on. There's no excuses where if you have a website in a day, the whole point of it is so that the next day you get to sleep in. You can watch TV in the morning. <laughs> Literally. I, I was just looking at my calendar and I was like looking at my slots for website in a day. And I was like, I don't know. I might want to like go to dinner with my friends that day. So I just like won't schedule anything like, you know, like stuff like that. Where it's, it's so like, amazing. Crazy. It's so amazing. I I can't believe that you're quitting your job and that you'll be able to fully step into that. Like that is the most exciting fucking thing ever, ever. I know. I know. It's so liberating. I literally am so excited. (laughs) I I wish I, I'm so glad that you told me on the podcast, but I kind of wish you told me before so I could like open up a bottle of champagne right now and like spray it around. (laughs) Totally calling for that. (laughs) Yeah, we'll we'll do it for sure. I'm so excited. I love it. Okay. I kind of want to hone in on the unfulfillment of jobs because obviously you felt a lack of in your nine to five of like being inspired and, um, not being truly happy and content. And I feel like it's so unfortunate, but that is the vast majority of our workforce in the majority of jobs. What, why do you feel like people stick through that and don't make a change? I think, and after, for example, when it came down to me analyzing, like my husband and I sat down and we looked at like our expenses and the benefits you get with a corporate job versus like the risk of being self-employed. And there's so much with it that I do completely understand why people stay because when it comes to when we're in America, things like insurance and mm-hmm. and all of these things that we've kind of been trained to taught or sorry, we've kind of been taught that that is your only option for success Mm -hmm. that is the only way to retire it is the only way to you know get to the doctor like and those things are very expensive and it's not very conductive to being like a small business owner it's kind of this weird totally um, cycle hamster wheel thing but at the end of the day i just think that the possibilities were so much higher than any benefit i would get from Mm. a nine to five job and for me once I kind of realized like truly how much energy I put into a nine to five that I do not like to do a lot of people, I think I always thought that I would be okay with having a nine to five. If it was a true, like I didn't hate my job, but I don't have to love it. And I make good money enough to pay the bills and that's fine. And I was in that mentality for a little bit, but then I just realized that it's not worth the lack of fulfillment because the Mm. fulfillment that I get doing something like this is so much greater and it's so much you actually get more motivation even when you're exhausted from like mm-hmm. a long day or what have you you still have that like mindset that energy shift where you're still motivated to keep showing up you're working with really cool people like that type of energy and like the circle that you build is so much more productive long term for i think even like your lifestyle than truly like working that cubicle life for me even though yeah. i work from home you know what I mean? Like that type of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. totally. It will not to mention that the potential is kind of unlimited. Like when you're an entrepreneur and you're self-employed. Oh, am I here? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Sorry. Yes, oh, I no. can now. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Okay. Um, well, when you're an entrepreneur, you, your potential is kind of unlimited. Like you don't have a ceiling cap where when you work a nine to five, like, what are you going to try and grow to like get your 3% raise? Like, you know, you could literally make a tiny tweak in your business and double your income. And so the potential there is so much greater, not even considering the fulfillment part. (laughs) Well, literally it doesn't matter the business model. If you think about like how hard you work in a nine to five, like in general, you're like, I want to get promoted, right? You work so hard for what, six months? And you could easily, first of all, get passed up and not even get a promotion. Mm-hmm. And even so, you might get like a 5% raise if you're lucky. Meanwhile, instead of when I take my business full time, I can now open my books, you know, full time. Mm-hmm. Like, really, who even knows how much that will impact my business model? You know what I mean? And I actually have the ability to show up full time on Instagram, <laughs> marketing, and doing things that I haven't even 
opened channels for for my yeah. business because I just haven't had time. That it's is so true. Crazy impact to it for sure. Yeah. Well, and being genuinely happy with the thing that you spend the most amount of your time and your waking hours doing is worth money. So it's almost like if you painted this picture of like, okay, well, what if, how much would you spend, you know, a month? If I could tell you that every day you're, you wake up happy about what you're doing, like, would you make a sacrifice for how much you're earning? I feel like some people would definitely be like, no, I'll take the shitty job. But a lot of people right. would be like, no, I would sacrifice, you know, some money to yeah. be genuinely happy. But then what if you don't actually have to, have to sacrifice anything? What if you actually get to make more money? And yeah. you, it's like, it's literally that. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know it is. Yeah, it is so crazy. And it's just one of those things where it's like, I always thought, and this is going to sound cliche to a lot of people, but like, I always had a feeling I was meant to do something more like impact in a different way. And I just didn't know how that was going to play out. Mm. And I, just thought, I thought maybe it was just climbing the corporate ladder. I became C-level, whatever it was, and I could do cool things, which yeah, sure, that's fine. But I have found that even in this small amount of time, my business, I've made way more of an impact mm. on way more people than I ever thought possible. And I was like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be putting like that energy. And one of the things which sounds kind of funny is I was trying to figure out how to make more friends that are really inspiring mm. because business owners in general, female entrepreneurs like have a certain energy to them, you know? Um, and I wanted more friends like that. And I was like, how do I get in like those circles of people? And I was like, I need to start a business so mm. that I am that level of those people and instantly I've made so many friends with people that are like so inspiring and have incredible businesses and like you're like leveling up your business and like yourself as mm -hmm. your like personal professional development which is crazy too yeah. yeah I think people don't even understand until they're in it that choosing yourself and choosing your own like happiness in your career is a pure reflection of how you'll be as a human and how much growth opportunity you have and like how much yeah. like mindset that you have to work on and just how much more self-empowering <laughs> beliefs yeah. that you have to have that when you go down the road of entrepreneurship, like you, you're not just growing professionally, you are growing yourself and like who yes. you are as a human. And I don't feel like people think about that. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I totally agree with that. Yeah, yeah sure. it's so cool. Okay, I'm curious with your nine to five. If okay, well, okay, let's talk numbers. Are you cool with talking numbers? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you said that you're making double what you had worked in your nine to five. What mm -hmm. is that? What is like your highest earned month now in web design? Well, my highest earned month is this month. And that was, I'm just shy of $24,000 in one month. Okay. So no brainer that you're quitting your job tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it matters what type of nine to five you have. That is <laughs> good money. <laughs> and not to mention that that's what you have earned not being full time in your business. That's what is the most insane thing about it. Yeah. And I think that that's what a lot of people... Like that's obviously everyone's hang up when you have another job is, you know, if you're making like, I don't know, 50% of your, you know, nine to five salary, like at what point do you decide to make the jump? For me, I had to at least replace my nine to five salary mm. just because of our, you know, life basically. Mm -hmm. And that was what made me the most comfortable uh, was just that mindset. And so that was my goal. I was like, I just need to be replacing my nine to five and then I'm good. So then at least I can, you know, break even mm -hmm. in my mind. I'm pretty analytical in that way. Um, but I, again, it comes down to, I literally was like, I'm fine working 12 hour days. I'm fine doing, you know, discovery calls at 6 PM at night. Like that type of stuff just has to happen. And there often isn't like a secret sauce. It is truly just grinding essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We've joked a couple of times that it's kind of the famous quote from Kim K of like, all you need to do is get your ass up and work. I mean, and it, it really is. <laughs> like, I'm not wrong though. <laughs> Unfortunately. She's really not wrong. 
she's really not wrong. Yeah. 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 And it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, I literally just, I say it all the time. You just embrace the suck for a little bit. And I think a lot of people quit right on the cusp mm. of like, it because it does get hard. It's mm. not easy. Like I don't, I'm not necessarily getting a full eight hours of rest every night. You know what I mean? But like my vision is there and mm. it's so much bigger than just quitting a nine to five really. And it's just like such a more of a long-term thing for me that, okay, for example, six months of, you know, embracing the suck is so worth the rest of my life being sufficient and like confident in what I'm doing in my life. Like when you're looking at that, that's yeah. amazing. Right. It's so true. I feel like embracing the suck would be a really good podcast name. I think so too. That's yeah. We're like a it's book. really been my mantra of just, I'm just I embracing it. it and it's fine. It's a phase of life. It's not yeah. going to be forever. Not everything in life is easy. And this is just entrepreneurship in itself is just not easy. Yeah. Or else everybody would be doing it. Yeah. And you do get what you put into it. And so yeah. while Yes, you know, like you, you in a few months, you've scaled to 25k months, you're quitting your job, you've had incredible results. But because of that, you have had an incredible just like drive to just fucking go for it. And you've worked your ass off. And so the results match your efforts. Right. And so if you let's say you're like a stay at home mom, and you want to just make like three to $5,000 a month, you don't have to do it that you could probably no. work just a couple hours yes. a day here and there and make that work. But it really is like, do you want to grow? What do you want to grow? And it's totally okay. If you, if other people don't want to grow what you want to grow, that's the whole point of like yes. you defining what success looks like for you. And so I think even Cause I do feel like people get triggered of like, Oh, I mean, that's like so rude. Like I work really hard too, but it's not that easy, but mm -hmm. it really is just what you put into it and your vision too. how you mentioned. I feel like that's such a driving force. That always is what allowed me to get through the shitty ass parts. Yeah. Because of course there are, there are times where it's 4am and I'm crying to will. And I'm like, what yeah. the fuck is life? It's going to happen. But it's worth it. It's always worth it. Um, okay. So I'm curious if someone's listening to this, they're a corporate girly and they're like, okay, I'm inspired as hell. What, Yeah. where would someone even start? Where, <laughs> what kind of advice do you have for them? <laughs> I think that the advice to anyone corporate is see, for me, I had gotten this like rhetoric in my head that I was a very, analytical person like what I do in my nine to five I also do marketing but I work in a very analytical sales it's not like a sexy version of marketing and I thought that that was my brain like I thought that that's how I mm. thought. and then I was like but I love being creative I just feel like I have not even entertained that as a possibility for me and so I think my advice would be to figure out not only what are you good at, but what truly do you want to be doing? And then you would be surprised, especially in corporate, how many skills you have to run a business. Mm. Because if you're working in corporate America, like I am, you almost run your own mini business, depending on how your teams are set up. And mm. you basically are running a business, especially if you work in anything that's sales led or revenue driven, like you would be amazed <laughs> at mm. how much you can use that in your mentality of your business. And so I think that I know you've kind of talked about that, like taking your soft skills and your hard skills, no matter what you're doing, nine to five, if you're serving, if you're bar like those skills in like the hospitality space for customer service are mm -hmm. so valuable. And then the technical side of running a business in corporate America are so valuable. And I just think that it's, my advice would be that it's completely possible. And to start, just get started. Even if it's not perfect in the beginning, even if it takes you, it took me, you know, I bought your course in like basically beginning of August. I didn't launch until October. Cause again, I was working two jobs. I didn't really mm -hmm. know how serious I wanted to take it. And then I was like, you know, fuck it. I'm all in, I guess. And let's just, you know, roll the dice on it. And that was just the beginning of it for me. 
Yeah. I love that. My God, people are going to be so fucking inspired. So you found it in August, you launched in October and you're quitting your job. What is it? It's January 31st. So like, oh, so you're quitting on February 1st. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very symbolic in that way. I'm like on the first. (laughs) So that is a life changing decision that happened relatively very quickly. Like, I always say that the first six months in your business feel like a lifetime, but then once you're out of it and you can look back, six months is nothing. Like six months is like literally a blip in your life. And because you made a decision and you like took action and you went for it, your entire life is about to change. Like tomorrow when you put in your two weeks, you... It's so cool too, because if you just trust the process, you have a vision and you work hard, but like, you know that life will happen. It'll unfold how it's supposed to happen. You have no idea what lays ahead of you. And like, clearly you have so much potential, clearly with all the results that you've had, that it's so exciting. Like you must be so excited to just have what's ahead of you. (laughs) I know it's crazy. Yeah. I think that my biggest thing too, which is another good piece of advice is once I decided to commit to this, commit to the bit, you know, to the plot twist, whatever it may be, my, this was my plan. A, there was no plan B. Mm. There is no backup. If you like mindset wise, or like, this is my only option, then you start putting a hundred percent of yourself into whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that was my whole thing. I'm like, there's no, I don't want to go back to nine to five. It's not an option. I don't, you know, I, my only option is to be successful. What does that look like? How do I do it? And then you start doing it. And obviously things change and priorities change and shift as your business grows. But like that, that's it. That's your like North star essentially. Yeah. I totally agree. I did the same thing. I was like, there is no plan B. This is right. the one path I have. Becca, get your shit together because yeah. if you fuck up this, you fuck up everything because there's nothing else. <laughs> yep. I that was like my I just pretended like I didn't even have a nine to five. Like I didn't have any other income coming in. Like this was pretend like it doesn't exist. You know, mm. like pretend you are full time. Show up on social media like you're full time. I think that there's a lot of people that some of my clients didn't even know that I had another job because of just the way that I've shown up and been consistent and everything. And then when I do talk about having a nine to five, my DMs are flooded with, how are you doing this? <laughs> like, how are you like managing? How, like, how do you keep showing up in this capacity and also have like a corporate America nine to five, like yeah. all day type thing. It's, it's a lot, but it's worth it. And you're close to the to the end. I can taste it. So yeah, close. it's so fucking exciting. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I feel like I I'm so inspired by you, like Thanks. just your journey and your story and everything and your vibe. I just love you. I am oh, so obsessed. I, I can't wait till we get put in the same room. It's going to be so dangerous. <laughs> Seriously. It's going to be fucking amazing. Um, one request, can you record you quitting your job tomorrow? Yeah, I would love nothing. I was okay. Already to <laughs> okay, perfect. I need to see that. Send that to me. Yeah. ASAP. <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah. I no idea. Oh my God. I love it. Okay. Where can people come hang out with you? Where's your corner? Yeah, I am mainly on Instagram right now. It's been a really fruitful channel for me. I'm on Buzz and Banter Studios everywhere. Same handle. Um, but yeah, I'm hanging on Instagram all day, every day. I love it. And if you're listening to this, everything will be linked below. So be sure to go become besties with Nikki because she's amazing. And thank you again so much for sharing your story. I know that this is just going to inspire everyone, but I also hope motivate people. Like let's, let's go, let's make shit happen. Yeah, exactly. Let's get to work. Okay. I love that. Well, with that, you guys see you next episode.